You're live. All right, glad to see those with us here this morning. Got uh, quite a few of our congregation that's uh, gone this morning, so we want to. <clears throat> Their children or grandchildren is uh, downstate. So let's just remember them. Let's remember those in our bulletins this morning. If you want to open your bulletins. For those that's online, if you want to turn to 405, will be our first song this morning. And uh, I want to remember those that's in our prayer list this morning. Uh, the prayers for Terry Squire that uh, his mother had passed away. He doesn't say what her, uh, his mother's name is, but we want to remember that family this morning. Also, some uh, remember all those that's in there, of the loss, especially those, our military, the people that keeps us free, that gives us this opportunity. And this morning, <clears throat> we got a gentleman here this morning that's got a birthday. He came in, he's about sitting back there with his a checkered shirt on, and uh, I, I asked him if he had enough money to, you know, to, to cover it. So he might have to, he might have to have somebody to borrow for him. Yeah, he might have to see Ron, Mr. JJ. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to Jamie. Happy birthday to you. Charlie, you got a birthday? I have one the same day Johnny did. <laughs> Charlie, you got one. Did you put your money in last week? I wasn't here. No, I was here. I'm 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 here. i Happy birthday, Happy birthday to you. 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 You carry your food right here. Not always. Saying, how many pole locks does it take to put a lot more being with that? Now we got that pig out of the way. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> well, we're glad to have those birthdays this morning. Some anniversaries in there. Also, our news and notes. Uh, Miss Sharon Haney's to take care of the uh, church directory, and we've got some three ch uh, sign-up things in the back for uh, if you uh, got any changes for the uh, directory for like births, weddings, address changes. Uh, get up, you can put those down, and she'll take care of that. And there's a, uh, I think there's a directory in the back, right, Sharon? Yeah. Household members moving in or out. Yeah. Household members, right. and. Uh, he changes. Sharon will take care of that. She'll uh, make sure it's updated in the directory. She's done it for years. Yeah. And also, uh, Brother Doc is getting a, a, a BSL, a basic life saving training, uh, set up for us. There's also there's a sign up sheet in the back for that. And uh, it's including the CPR and the AED training. And if anyone's interested in that, and as he'll set a time and date for that. And I'll, for any age group, youth, uh, adult, and middle age, it uh, doesn't matter. Uh, you can, we can use this. And that's a, it's a great thing and access that Brother Doc is uh, taking care of us for here at the church. Did you say elderly? I did. Uh, is that, who's that include? <laughs> <laughs> We want the youth to sign up for this too. Yes. Uh, the elderly yeah. are the ones that would probably be at the other end of it. Yeah. <laughs> Especially if you need so. 
with you. And them. it says in the bottom here that especially some of the youth group or the youth when it signs up. So that's always handy. You know, we like about that, but it may be people working out here and the youth is the only one that could provide the service. So, exactly. you know, they need to know what they need to do. Some good writings in the bulletin this morning. Take time to read those. And uh, always good writings in the Gospel Minutes. And uh, we appreciate uh, Brother Dan and uh, Patsy for doing these bulletins. It's a lot of hard work and about getting the information to put into these. So uh, take time to read those. Also on the back, it says remember our outreach programs. That's... Uh, the family group, if you've got any pop cans or aluminum or whatever you want to get rid of, uh, there's a thing to put it in out here and we'll take them off. And also for the uh, saltine crackers for the Christ Pantry, uh, uh, they, Jimmy and Vanessa Sue and Patsy, they take those down. And Ron and Charlene uh, helps out with that. Uh, is it on a Monday now? Yeah. It's Monday. So. And, uh, so I'll turn it over to Brother Jim. Also, Paul, we are at the Resource Center. Okay, so uh, for those that's online, Joe said that the, the resource center at the schools is having a shoe drive for to, when they go back to school. Uh, they're they're needing those you, new or used, and uh, so they're going to the drive here at the church for uh, the youth for the uh, center there for at the schools. That's that's for all the schools, right? Yes, all for the resource the center. Yeah. All right. it includes flip flops. It includes flip flops. Lots of flip flops. Lots of flip flops. So, all right. Brother Jim. <clears throat> I'm out to dry. Thank you, Brother Paul. Uh, has anybody in here had a perfect day this morning? <clears throat> I've struck again. I had got dressed and I was sitting there at the kitchen table waiting on Sue to go out the door and she said, Jimmy. I knew I had a problem. <laughs> she said, you've got your shirt on back. <laughs> I said, I don't reckon. And I said, yep, that little mark here was in the back. <laughs> so I'm sitting there trying to get it out this way, and she's pulling the overhead. <laughs> I'd like to have a picture there. <laughs> we need to laugh. Laugh yes. is good for the spirit and the soul. And uh, in this song, we're going to come down, I think, in the third verse. How many of you in here know what crepe is? Huh? They used to before there were flower shops and all that. Uh, someone from the family would take crepe paper and they would make flowers out of it. And they put it around the doorknob. I always like what? Black, preferably. Yeah. They used to use black. Tell you one more. Used to be a lady here in church when we sang How Firm the Foundation. And we get down to that verse and it says, And when holy hair shall thy temple adore. She quit. She quit. And I explained to her, I said, That word means white hair. So, just little things that comes along that uh, defines us. <coughs> Uh, I'm sure all of us have, have done these little nutty things. The song this morning as we open up the services from Revelation 14, verse 3. And they sung it, sung as it were a new song before the throne. They sung just like we're doing right here. And so this is, this is a good song. We have our disappointments here, but God will take care of those. <clears throat> There's no disappointment in heaven, no weariness, sorrow, or pain, no hearts are bleeding and broken, no song with a minor refrain. The clouds of our earthly horizon will never appear. The sky for all will be sunshine 
in goodness with never a song or a sigh. I'm bound for that beautiful city. My Lord has prepared for his own. Where all the redeemed of all ages sing boldly around the white throne. Sometimes I grow homesick for it, and the joy that there shall be hope. What a joy that will be when my Savior I see in the beautiful city of gold. We'll never pay rent for our mansion. The taxes will never come due. Our arms will never grow threadbare. But I'll be faithless and new. We'll never be hungry nor thirsty. Nor languish in poverty there. For all the rich families of heaven. I sing to my children will share. I'm bound for that beautiful city. My Lord is prepared for his own. Where all the reaping of all ages sing glory around the white throne. Sometimes I grow homesick for heaven, and joy that there shall be whole. What joy that will be when my Savior I see in the beautiful city of gold. There will never be crape on the doorknob. No funeral train in the sky, no graves on the hillsides of glory, or there we shall never more die. The old will be young there forever, transformed in a moment of time. Immortal will stand in his likeness, the stars and the sun to not shine. I am bound for that beautiful city, my Lord is prepared for his own. Where all the redeemed of all ages sing glory around the white throne. Sometimes I go on seek for heaven, and glory that there shall be whole. What a joy that will be when my Savior I see. In the beautiful city of gold. Number 350. Scripture for that is found in 1 Corinthians. Thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 57. This is an old song. It goes back a long way. It's got some good thoughts in it, some good feelings. Maybe we felt like that in time. <coughs> my latest son is sinking fast. My race is nearly run. My strongest trials now are past. My triumph is begun. Oh, come. Behold, they come, I hear the noise 
Anybody else? I have to get my baby powder Barbie Ruth remembered. She had surgery two weeks back, had a bunch of tumors taken out. Now Tuesday they'll go back in and fix a rupture place, so she has to have surgery again on Tuesday. Who was that now, my Bernice? My daughter Barbie. Huh? My baby daughter Barbie Ruth, she has to have okay, surgery. Okay, Barbie? Yeah, she has surgery Tuesday. Remember her? Remember Bonnie Gill? Can't remember Bill. He just got out of the hospital. Okay, out of the hospital. Wanda, did you say out of the hospital? Yes. Yeah, he had surgery last Monday, and he had blood clots in his uh, kidney and in his bladder, and he just got out of the hospital Thursday. Okay, we'll continue to. Pray for Bill. Thank you. You are so welcome. We'll say a prayer for you too for taking care of him. Thank you. I appreciate <coughs> that too. Can you, can you remember, remember Chris and Connolly, uh, Blake's girlfriend? Uh, pet scan came back bad. The chemo wasn't working. Who is that, Josh? Uh, Blake, Heather's youngest boy. Oh, okay. Blake's girlfriend. And what, aren't you glad we're in a place, you know, this is our family, this is our house. And we can come together and we can talk about things. We need to. Uh, everybody needs to love and care about each other. Jimmy, I have a friend that I went to school with, and last week her son had committed suicide at 14. And so... From what I gather, she's really, she doesn't know the Lord for her husband, mm -hmm. so they're really having a rough time with it. Um, it's, I just can't imagine what she's going through. Okay. Linda's friend she went to college with? Tim. 14-year-old son. That was Tim, huh? Not Brenda. Oh, yeah. Tim. Yeah. Yeah, Tim's friend. You two sound a whole lot more. <laughs> <laughs> We've been told that, yeah. Uh, Jimmy, I have a friend and co-worker. Uh, he just got out of the hospital, Grant Sorrell, with cancer. He just had cancer surgery, so remember him. Okay, Grant Sorrell. It's just, uh, it's an ongoing thing. Uh, I was going to ask, 
would it do any good to send her a card from the church? Well, from what I gather, I'm not quite sure exactly where she's at. Okay. Um, I know they said that she was in a mental institution, Sorry. psych ward, and they're kind of monitoring her because she's trying to do the same thing. Mm. So she really needs a lot of prayers, and I guess, well, you know, they like I said, they don't know the Lord, so. And she has a daughter that's 21, 22, so. They need a lot of prayers. What was her name? Um, Lois Sloan Lamaster. And it happened last last weekend. They buried him on the 4th of July. But mm -hmm. And I had thought she had, I mean, I know she was dealing with it rough, but we were later told that it's it's a lot worse. Than, yeah. so. Can't imagine. No, and he done it at home, 2 o'clock in the morning, so. For people that's got kids strong and they're in that range, let me admonish you to watch them. The things they're seeing on all of these gadgets that you can run, a lot of those things just aren't good for you. There's people that will talk you into suicide. Go ahead. The bullying. The bullying is unreal. Our schools is, is eat up with it. Yeah. Bullying. Bullying. Work of the devil, that's going on some in school. When I was way down, I got punched a time or two. Because I was small, but I punched back. <laughs> Anyone else? Ronnie and Charlene. Remember them. She's got a boot off right now. You shouldn't kid on her. On a prayer song. And I told Sue, I said, if I was Charlene, I'd get in one last kick. <laughs> I still have the boot on. <laughs> I, I know. <laughs> now, Raymond, please. Raymond, do you have something? Who is it now, Raymond? I'm sorry. Everett? Philip. Okay, I know him. We need to we need to do it. We can get him a card if you wish, Raymond. Philip's on the board at REA. He got the William Keating and Cody. Yep. Electrical Yeah. Know him well. Got a rough road in front of him. I also remember my brother, Paul Stapleton. He's having um, five bypasses this Wednesday. Wow. Paul Stapleton, Joe's brother. He's going to be sore for a while. Brack called me, and he had just had a spinal tap, and they did a biopsy on the liver. He has not heard from that yet. But he said, when you go to church, ask them to pray for me. And I said, well, we keep you on the prayer list. Right. <coughs> and he said, hopefully I'll be out in September. All right. All right. That'd be great. Sharon's doing some break. And stuff. Having a struggle with health. He's not that old, is he? 27. 27. It's good, good that we can do this. I can remember my name is Sister Mary. She's having a lot of health issues. And also my brother-in-law, Anthony Hunter, he's you know, having some more health issues. Paul's sister and brother-in-law. Brother Heart problems. Yeah, Heart and remember problems. my family. I have a niece that's on her honeymoon in Florida. And then my sister is going out west Monday, heading out west. And then mom is having a DNC done. Oh. And it may be cancer. We will Le know for sure the 22nd if it is or not. Leanne's mom, possibility of cancer. Cancer. Mm. My Aunt Martha, she was, she was 
came home from the hospital. She was in there four days, and we about lost her. She just turned 98. My goodness. But she said she was going home. You know, I, I sit and watch the Lawrence. We'd sit on the, we'd sit on the front porch. And, of course, I get a little bit. It's like he was looking off, you know. And it wasn't very long until he passed away. Sharon Saint? Anyone else? If not, the song is number 11. And, uh, Scripture for that is found in the book of Psalms, chapter 148 and verse 2. I will sing praises unto my God, and that's exactly what we're going to do. Pour it out. Praise Him, praise Him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer. Sing over this wonderful love proclaimed. Hail Him, hail Him, highest archangel in glory. Strength and honor give to His holy name. Like a shepherd, Jesus will guard His children. In His arms He carries them all day long. Praise Him, praise Him. Tell of his excellent greatness. Praise him, praise him, ever in joyful song. Praise him, praise him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer. For our sins he suffered and bled and died. He our God, our hope of eternal salvation. Hail him, hail him, Jesus the crucified. Thousand is praises, Jesus is Lord our sorrow, love unbounded, wonderful deepness strong. Praise Him, praise Him, tell of His excellent greatness. Praise Him, praise Him, ever in joyful song. Praise Him, praise Him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer. Every desires, the things that's on our hearts concerning us, about the people that we love, that we're concerned about. And that's what God wants us to do. He wants us, what's on our hearts, to come up to Him. He already knows what's there, but He wants for us to request those that we have. In James chapter 5, and there's many of us that are afflicted. There are many of us that are merry. We sing songs in our hearts, praises to Him. But He said, If any among you afflicted, let him pray. And that's what we do. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. He says, Any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church. And let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. We do these things in Christ's name. We can't do anything on it within ourselves. God has the healing hand. The healing touch comes from God. And he says, And the prayer of the faith 
shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. And in verse 16, this is what we do. He says, confess your faults one to another and pray one for another. We have to pray one for another. We even have to pray for our enemies, people that don't like us, that hate us for what we stand up for, for the Christian values that's in our lives. We need to pray for those people. We need to pray for those people that don't know Christ as their Lord and Savior. That they somewhere down the road that they'll give their life to Him. And He said, The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. The effectual, fervent prayer. God wants to hear those fervent prayers that you have in your heart. To come up to Him for those that are in need. At this time, we ask Brother Doc to come lead some prayer. Let's pray. Our Father, we're wonderfully blessed today with all the wonderful gifts you've given us. We're thankful for this church this congregation, this great place. It's been a blessing and we continue for you to bless, continue to bless this church. Father, we pray now for our country. We've got many, many, many problems and we can't see the way through, but you can. And Father, we, we pray for your help and that because this country means our future, the children's future, grandchildren's future. And we, we pray, Father, that you strengthen us. Help us all, Father, to turn our, help this country turn back to you as you had advised your own children many, many years ago. Help us to look back to you. Father, go with our service today. Be with the men that's going to be up here to preach and teach. In the Lord's name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Each Lord's Day we come together to worship God in spirit and in truth and to remember the sacrifice that he made for you and I. And without his sacrifice and his love and his devotion to his Father and doing his Father's will, we wouldn't have this opportunity and to thank him for the love that he had for sending his Son to die on the cross of Calvary for our sins. When we take of this cup and this bread that represents this body that was broken for us and the blood that was shed for us, we need to run our minds backwards and see him nailed to that cross, standing between the heavens and the earth with his arms outstretched. For you and I. The agony, the suffering, the torment that he went through. <clears throat> he was beaten beyond despair. Can he recognize that? <clears throat> Luke chapter 22. He sends his disciples to make ready the Passover. The Last Supper. It says, And they went and found, as he had said unto them, and they made ready the Passover. It says, and, and when the hour was come, he sat down, and the twelve apostles with him. And he said unto them, 
with desire I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. He knew where he was headed. He knew that he had to suffer. He said, For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took the cup, and gave thanks, and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. And he took bread, and gave thanks, and broke it, and gave unto them, saying, This is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. That bread and that cup, when you take of that, remember this morning, that was Jesus Christ's body and his blood that was shed for you and I. It was broken. He said, Likewise also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. That blood was shed for you and I. We have another song, 321. The deacons and elders will surround the table. And remember why he died for you and I. Why we're here, why we partake of this bread and this cup. Scripture for this song is found in the book of Galatians, <coughs> chapter 2, verse 20. I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Alas, and did my Savior bleed, and did my sovereign die? Would he devote that sacred head for such a worm as I? At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. Was it for Christ that I had done? He groaned upon the tree. Amazing pity, grace, I know.
Take this in the manner be pleasing unto you and if there be anything between us that ask for your forgiveness. That's this in Jesus' name. Amen. We continue our thanks, Heavenly Father, for this is through the vine, which does represent your shed blood on the cross for forgiveness of our sins. Help us to take it in the manner that's pleasing in your sight. So come together each Lord's Day and uh, as we lay by in store, we give back to the church that God's blessed us with to help those that are in need. And who knows, we might be there. You never know. But, uh, if it is, you know, we want to be able to help when the occasion arises. And uh, it belongs to him anyway. What we have here in this life is not ours. It's, it's a gift that he gives to us that we can use. Our clothes that we have, he lends them to us. When we die, they're going to be someone else's. When you die, your property is going to be someone else's. The only thing that is yours is your soul. Amen, brother. That's the only thing that's going to be left when you die. That is yours. And it is yours to preserve it or not to preserve it. To preserve it is to give it to God. And not to preserve it, you'll be cast out into outer darkness where there's weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. Where the worm dieth not, and the fire is never quenched. That's the only thing that you possess. Everything else is his. 
The breath that you breathe is his. It's only lent to you. In chapter 9 of 2 Corinthians, he said, Therefore I thought it necessary to exhort the brethren that they should go before you to make up the bounty, make up beforehand your bounty, whereof ye had noticed before that the same might be ready as a matter of bounty and not as covetous. But I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he proposeth in his heart, so let him giveth, not, and not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye always have in all sufficiency in all things may abound in every good work. This time as we have another song, number 92, is a uh, place of play. Scripture for this song is found in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 33, verse 8. If you do not speak to warn the wicked from his way, if thou dost not speak to him, to warn him, warn the wicked, his blood will I require at your hand. <clears throat> when in the better land, before the bar we stand, how did the great our souls may be? Should cry in deep despair, you never mentioned him to me. You never mentioned him to me. You helped me not the light to see. You met me day by day and knew I was astray, yet never. Mention him to me. Oh, let us spread the word where it may be heard and grow his souls alive to see. And yonder none may say, You showed me not the way. You never mentioned him to me. for your offering and be sure that it be used in God's service. I just want to take just a few minutes of Brother Palm's time. I see that it's feeding. It could be like that story I told about the guy that only had a half hour to speak but then he ended up speaking for an hour. I don't know if Tom's going to do that there or not, but it's God's time.
Turn to Acts chapter 17. <clears throat> Apostle Paul is speaking to the, the people at Athens. And he's concerned about an unknown God. In the United States today, there's a lot of unknown gods. There's a lot of people that's putting unknown gods to worship them. He says, now while, Paul, while, now while Paul waited for them in Athens, his spirit was stirred in him. When he saw the city wholly giving to idolatry, <laughs> and it's running rampant to death. He says, Therefore disputed he in the synagogue with the Jews and with the devout persons and in the market daily with them that met with him. So the philosophers brought Paul together to them at Mars Hill. And used to be disputing with them. So then Paul stood in the midst of the Mars Hill and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that all things, that in all things you are too superstitious, or they were too religious in what they were doing. He says, For I have passed by, he says, For as I passed by, and behold, your devotions I found as an altar with this inscription to the unknown God, whom therefore you ignorantly worship him, Declare I unto you. They ignorantly worshipped this unknown God. Paul was going to tell them who this unknown God was. Now this unknown God is Jesus Christ that died on the cross of Calvary for your sins and my sins and the sins of the world. Jesus Christ, the sovereign God, is a God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is the Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands. Jesus Christ today lives in our hearts. He doesn't live in a piece of wood. He doesn't live in a piece of metal or in a building. He doesn't live in the Hollywood's elite. He lives in the true Christian's hearts and minds. He says, Neither is he worshipped with men's hands as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things. He doesn't need anything. It all belongs to him and hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth and hath determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation that they should seek the Lord. And this is what we need to do today is seek the Lord. We need to seek his ways, his paths, his truth, His righteousness, and we need to live by His holy scriptures. The word that is will last until the end of time. It's the same yesterday, today, and forever. It changes not. He says, and if happily they might feel after Him and find Him. That's what we need to tell people today. Search for Him. Find him, and happily you will be when you do. Though he be not far from every one of us, Jesus Christ is not far from us. He's standing there with outstretched arms. Look what 28 says.
Verse 30 says, And at times of this ignorance, well, let me just go ahead and back and read 29. It says, for, for as much then as we are the offsprings of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is likened to gold or silver or stone, graven by art and man's devices. God doesn't live in those things. He lives in you and I. And the times of this ignorant God winked at, but now commandeth that every, all men everywhere to repent. We're required to repent of the sins that we've done in our life and give it to God. If you expect to make heaven your home, you need to repent of the sins that we've done in our life and to be baptized for the remission of sin. Because he hath appointed a day. This day right here, you and I will not escape it. No one will. And the day is appointed in which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he hath ordained. Who is that man he ordained? It was Jesus Christ that we took the bread and the communion that represent. Jesus Christ is the man that was ordained. Whom he hath given assurance to all men in that he hath raised him from the dead. We don't serve a, a dead God. We don't serve one of these idols that the people in Athens will serve him. We serve a risen Savior today. In verse 34, we hope that you take what me and Brother Tom and the other ministers here tell you and what verse 34 says in this chapter says here, how be it certain men clave unto him and they believed what Paul told them. He preached Jesus Christ and him crucified and raised victorious over death, hell, and the grave. And that's what you and I need to do today is believe exactly what Paul wrote. He was inspired by God to write the word of God. The word is truth, and it will set you free. Go to Tom. You make up food and crop up. <laughs> I'm not going to stand up here and preach for 30 minutes because I know you're wore out already. But what I do want you to do is turn with me to the first chapter of John, or first John, if you will. I want you to follow with me. We we talked about it in Sunday school and um, different classes that um, what we need to do is to make sure what these ministers that are teaching you is true. And so I'm just going to hit a couple of verses, uh, some of the main points that I want to get out in this message today. In, in, in the first John chapter 5, beginning, uh, we're going to begin again here in the uh, first verse just to say, let's take just a moment to pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thanks for listening to today. Pray that this message goes out in a way, dear Heavenly Father, that it uh, helps people to grow and to get closer to you, dear Lord. And we pray all these things through your name. So in the first verse there, it says, Whosoever believeth that Jesus is Christ is born of God. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone that loveth him that begat loveth him also that is begotten of him. And so there are so many times today that people, and we talked about this in Sunday school, that that they isolate a verse and say, well, this is all I've got to do for the plan of salvation. And, and I'm going to get into about talking about being born again today, and I'm going to get into talking about believing because that's what this chapter is about. And so Jesus said in, in John 3 and 3, he said, except a man be born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. We must die spiritually come back up out of that watery grave. That's a prerequisite to salvation. Jesus also said two verses later in the fifth, he said, except a man be born of water and spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Right. We know that in Acts 2.38, it tells us that if we are baptized for the remission of sins, we shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. There's no other way, no other explanation in the word of how we get the Spirit except to be baptized for the remission 
of sins. And remission means, uh, <coughs> excuse me, deliverance, liberty, forgiveness. We're asking God to deliver us, to give us liberty from the sins that we've committed. And believing is a term not just in our head, but it's also a act of being obedient. When we believe, that means that we're going to do the things that God asks us to do. So unless you are hearing my voice in this audience here today, or you're hearing me over this virtual experience, and you have not been born again, you are not a Christian. Right. Right. Now, there's, there's faith that's going to argue with that, and there's faith that's going to say, no, you don't have to do that. I'm going to tell you what Jesus said. I just read you what Jesus said. I don't care what the minister that you attend that congregation tells you you're good to go. If you haven't done this, you are not good to go. I don't care what men's tradition tells you that you are right. According to Jesus Christ, you are not all right. And you can live your life and go to church for a hundred years. You can take communion. You can give offering. You can say prayers, but you're not a Christian. And I tell you this today because I love you, and if you're hearing me, I want you to know that that is one aspect of salvation that so many people <coughs> neglect. Now, it is not the whole entire plan of salvation. We have to believe. We have to repent. We have to confess. We have to endure. But so many people just want to say, well, you know, they sprinkled me when I was an infant. The Bible says you have to believe. What did you believe when you were an infant? There's been people lately that I've heard about that went about and they sprinkled somebody on their deathbed. Nowhere in the scripture can I see a scripture that says anybody was converted on their deathbed. You're right. The Bible says God's spirit will not always strive with me. He may have gave them, given those people an opportunity earlier in their life to become a Christian and they denied him. And so we get down until we get on our deathbed, and it's not that we want to go to heaven. We sure just don't want to go to hell. So do whatever, do whatever formality you have to do to make sure I don't go to hell. That doesn't wash with God. It doesn't match the Scripture. And if this offends you, somebody texted me this morning and said, I'm going to wear my steel-toed shoes today. If, I, if this word steps on you, it needs, you need to have steel-toed shoes. But you need to get it right before you leave here, before you go and you get in a car wreck and you don't have your faculties anymore and you don't know what decisions to make and you're on a feeding tube and you're asleep for the rest of your life. I want to go now to the 14th verse. And I want you to think about this. If you're professing to be a Christian and you've never been baptized, 14 says, and this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. If we ask anything to his will, he hears us. How important is that to you, that you pray for a loved one, a spouse, a child, the best friend you have in the world, a co-worker, do you hope that God is listening to you? In John 14 and 6, it says, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me. So how can you come unto the Father if you don't get there through Jesus Christ, if you don't get there through that watery grave you're not born again. You didn't die as he did. And yet you think, I'm a Christian. Did you enter into the kingdom the correct way? Or did you enter in the way some man told you that it was appropriate and it was okay? And will that man be there on the day of judgment with you explaining to God, yeah, this is what I did to so-and-so. This is what I told him. Those people are going to account for what they do too. I'm going to account for what I preach to you. Right. And I'm going to preach to you what the Bible says and then that way I don't mess up. If you're not 
a child of God, God's not hearing you. You go, preacher, how can you say that to me? You may be a product of a false minister. You may be a product of some man-made tradition. Romans 6, 3, and 4 says, Know you not that so many of us who were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism and death, that like as Christ we are raised from the dead in the glory of his Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. Right. That newness is when God cleanses us from our sins and remembers them no more. Don't have to worry about it. They're forgotten. But what if you've never done that? What if you just kind of think, well, I'll pick up my cross and I'll go a mile away. Burger King away. I'll do it the way I want. What I'm trying to tell you is God's not hearing you, folks. God is not hearing any prayer you utter if you're not a born-again Christian. If that hurts your feelings, I'm sorry. Get in line and do the things that he wants you to do. So you say to me, how can you say God doesn't hear me? Let's go to Psalms 34 and start the 15th verse. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open to their cry. Amen for the Christian. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth and delivereth them out of their troubles. The Lord is nigh to them that are of broken heart and saves such to be a contrite spirit. Oh, preacher, but you're telling me something out of the Old Testament under the time of Moses. That doesn't apply to us today. Let's go to John chapter 9, verse 1. Now, we know that God heareth not 31. I'm sorry, chapter 9, 31. Now, we know that God heareth not sinners. But if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, him he hears. So if we do the will of God, which is to believe, to repent, to confess, to be baptized, to hear the word, and to endure, we do all of these steps, God's going to hear you. But you leave any of those steps out, you haven't completed the plan of salvation. And you either are a Christian or you are a sinner. And I have read you verses about what God says about sinners hearing and what he says about the righteous hearing those people. So you go on and lie to yourself. And, and the part that scares me to death is that on the day of judgment, and you wake up and you think, man, I trusted in man. I didn't read what the word said. And now I'm in a place I don't want to be. There's no do-overs. We have to get it correct in this lifetime. So you follow man, and you end up where man is. Or you follow Jesus, and you end up where Jesus is. I want you to go with me to the last verse down there. And he says, little children, keep yourselves from mine. And you know what's kind of funny is I read the commentary that, that he did that, and he calls little children in, in a lot of different uh, verses that he uses. But we are little children. We're ignorant in so many ways because we choose not to open the Bible and see what it says. We choose not to come to Sunday school and hear discussions about what it is. We choose not to come on Wednesday night. We choose not to come on Sunday night. We want to remain ignorant. We don't really care about eternity. We just want to put enough to make that passing grade to get by. What is that, what is that command? He, Jesus told him, said that we'll love God with all our heart, all our mind, all our soul, all our being. No, just enough to get by. <clears throat> Wait till the day of judgment. See if you passed. See if you didn't. We need the word that Jesus taught us, and idolatry is ever present in this world. Satan has a subtle job of occupying our time with our job, with our hobbies, with our man, money, with man's traditions, even with our family. And you say, well, you're going to preach against family? God said that he would separate us from our family. He would make a difference. 
because we aren't to put our family in front of God or none of these other things I've mentioned. And that's what John is saying here. He ends this chapter by telling us to be aware. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. I'm going to close with 1 Peter 5 and 8. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, is a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may be bound. Be sober. It means to be awake and to be alert, to be watching, to know when Satan is tempting you. Vigilant means to be 24 7. Not just on Sunday, the first day of the week, but every day of our lives because, listen, understand that this is God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit appearing right here is Satan. He doesn't have more power, but he's awful close. And he has a lot of demons, a lot of angels, and a lot of tools to convince us and to persuade us not to be doing what God wants us to do. My prayer today is that if somewhere, if, if I offended you, come and talk to me. I'd love to discuss the Bible. If the Word has offended you, come talk to me. We'll sit down and read it. If there's something you don't, hey, maybe I'm wrong somewhere. I'm not going to say I'm right all the time. But that's why I try to use most of what I do, the Word, and not what I think. We only get one chance to make it right. And as Brother Paul mentioned earlier, all these things that we have, God is allowing us to use them. We think we own them. But I've never looked in a casket and saw a deed or saw a checkbook or saw all these things that people thought they were going to take with them. They're not going with us. We're going to sing a song here in a minute in the morning of joy. It is my prayer that everybody here and everybody that's hearing me wakes up and there will be a morning of joy. Not a day of mourning. As we stand and sing number 353. It's just the opposite of the last song we sung. This would be a morning of joy for the children of God. Psalms 30, verse 5. Weeping may endure for a night. But joy cometh in the morning. When the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall arise, and the splendor in mortals shall envelop the skies, when the angel of death shall no longer destroy, and the dead shall awaken in the morning of joy, in the morning of joy, in the morning.
anybody have a word before we dismiss? Yeah, I want to say something. That time just passed as quickly. It's a good job, Scott. It's a good summer. It's in there. It's in the book. Uh, we will have uh, tonight uh, virtual and in-house for those that want to come. Uh, our Sunday night service. And six. Six o'clock for the uh, youth group. We meet at seven uh, here in the church house, but the youth group meet at seven. Good, good to message, see everyone. Hope, good message. I appreciate it. Hope everybody has a good day. I watch Josh if he will come up and lead us in a closing prayer. <coughs> Father, thank you, dear Lord, for allowing us to gather here in your name today, dear Lord. Lord, thank you for the message that Tom and Dad brought, dear Lord, and hope that we can all take something from it this week, dear Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for all your many blessings. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. That's a little boy who used to run between the seats. He's up here. Remember that little boy. That's <laughs> true. Well, we thought, I thought at first when they had mentioned it that it might have just been something, but you hear everything, but the word is, is the bullying was going on, and he had wrote, written a letter to his little girlfriend, and he, this other little girl decided to be mean and posted all over Facebook, and they were making fun of him. But I just can't imagine, you know, Garrison tried about three years ago. I know we spoke.